All right, it's one thing to shut down the Keystone Pipeline, as President Biden uh, did, making good on a campaign promise that he would do that uh, within the first day of his administration. Uh, but now targeting uh, any new drilling on federal land, well, then there are fighting words. Senator Cynthia Lomas joins us right now, the Republican senator from the beautiful state of Wyoming. Senator, uh, you've just introduced a bill uh, barring the president from doing this. How much support do you think you'll have in the Senate? We have over a quarter of the Senate now as co-sponsors, Neil, and we have House sponsors as well. Uh, we've reached out to Democrats to co-sponsor. So far, none have taken the bait, but I'm hopeful that it will become bipartisan as well as bicameral. So um, your argument is that it was a, a switcheroo. I mean, that you, you can't just institute something that's already happening and change it. Now, the administration has come back, Senator, to say this is only for new uh, drilling efforts, uh, not for those that might already be midway now. Uh, I don't know if that makes a difference to you, but is there a distinction? Well, it does. It, there's not a distinction because once a reservoir of oil and gas is discovered uh, and efforts to drill are proceeding, uh, it is a necessary adjunct that they continue to be able to drill and produce that reservoir over time. So to say now we're going to take a grand pause, uh, even if you're into an oil and gas reservoir that is producing, that is permitted, that is allowed, that's authorized by your state oil and gas commission, you can't do it because it's on federal land. That is the problem. This is contrary to existing federal law uh, that's been in effect since the 1970s. You know, um, the Biden administration's view is um, it's all this new clean energy. And I know you have been among those saying, well, you're, you're pro all energy alternatives, just not, not at the expense of what got us to the energy independence table. Uh, but that argument is, is not jiving with this new, new White House. And I'm wondering uh, what Republicans plan to do. Uh, uh, you know, it's one thing to, to fight executive order, to challenge it, just as environmentalists challenged uh, Donald Trump's executive orders to, to, to do the reverse. Where is this going? There are attorneys general from around the nation uh, that intend to challenge this executive order. Um, I can tell you that if we're really looking at it as a land conservation and uh, a, a prevention of climate change, uh, that the ex executive order will not meet those requirements. This isn't going to uh, impact climate change positively or negatively. And if you look at the pads on which um, um, wind energy are built. They're huge disruptors of uh, the surface of the ground, much bigger disruptors of the surface of the ground than oil and gas wells. So to say that there's a preference uh, of wind energy over uh, oil and gas wells, the surface disturbance is much worse. Uh, for um, wind energy. So we need to be weighing these issues as apples to apples comparisons. Real quickly, Senator, are you surprised that if the oil markets, you know, the trade on this sort of stuff, are, if they were worried about all of a sudden a potential supply cut, prices would be rocketing. They're not. They're, 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 they're pretty soft and continue to get softer today. I'm wondering um, if this is just not the issue uh, and the, the need for worry that you illustrate now and that offsetting the loss of that oil potentially is the slow economy. And that that is in a weird way giving the president the wind at his back on this stuff. What do you think? Well, there has been a decline in oil and gas consumption during the pandemic. That's absolutely true. Uh, but we don't know how long this moratorium is going to last. I'm not surprised that markets have not been affected by this executive order. There's a lot of oil and gas that's produced on private land, um, and so that will offset, uh, to a certain extent, some of the losses on public land for those states that primarily have oil and gas on private land. But in my state of Wyoming, half of the state is federal land. In Utah, it's two-thirds. In Nevada, it's seven-eighths. In Alaska, it's nine-tenths. 
federal land. So this is really impactful of those areas. It's also hugely impactful on states along the Gulf of Mexico because it also affects the outer continental shelf. And the revenues that are shared by the states uh, with the federal government on this oil and gas drilling uh, provides revenue for our schools. So it is going to be really devastating to those specific states that rely heavily on mineral production from federal land and offshore. You make a very good case, Senator. Thank you very much. Keep us posted if it gets beyond um, a quarter of the senators who are signing on to this. Uh, thank you very, very much, Senator Cynthia Lummis, uh, Republican of Wyoming.